Hi everybody. This week I'm going to try to share some videos with you and then hopefully you can share some videos back to me. So I got inspired by a video I saw uh, that I hopefully get to share with you about um, just getting back to playing and having, having fun and uh, really getting reconnected with your, with your horn and your instrument during this time. One of the phrases that the guy used on the video is that we all have time right now. So that's what I've been doing. So I've been practicing a lot in my garage and I just wanted to share with you some insights that I had. So I'll be sharing three videos this week and then giving a short little assignment for each one. So before I get going, I wanted to share with you what I'm looking at. Just wanted to show you the music that I'm looking at. So this is a trombone solo and it's called Cavatine. It's by Camille Saint-Saëns and he's a French composer and this is from the Romantic period. Okay, I tell you all that because that makes a difference with how I play it and how I phrase it. So the, today's lesson is about two bar phrases. So sixth graders, you'll have an easier time with this because your book is mostly uh, broken up into two bar phrases. So if you go all the way back to page six or page nine or page 12 even, you can find uh, examples of how to play two measures at a time and then take a breath. Uh, as we get older and as we play more and become more experienced, we want to make our phrases longer. So I'm always harping on the high school group to make their phrases longer. And then even high school kids that are getting, or middle school kids that are getting ready for contest want you to hold out the phrase or hold out the note. Well, this is an example of how to break those rules and how to not do that and how to actually go two bar phrases. I'm going to play uh, the whole thing for you, uh, and just a little snippet, just the two bar phrase part, uh, and then kind of come back and demonstrate to you how I was able to do that. Okay, so that's an example of how to do those two bar phrases in a solo part or any, any kind of melodic piece that you might have that you might want to make more shape to. So uh, hopefully you could have heard the, the two bar phrases part. Here's, here's one example 
of what I mean. And, and if, I, if you were able to look at the music while I'm playing, you could have seen that I, I literally almost breathed every two measures. So here's, the, here's just the first four measures. So there's some uh, shape to that. Now, uh, to, in order to practice that, in order to make that happen, uh, one, one thing you can do, and what I did, and so if you revert back to the picture I showed you, uh, breath marks. So marking in where you're going to breathe. And in this middle section of the solo, this lyrical section of the solo, I went ahead and marked in where I wanted to breathe. And it just so happened that it was about every two measures. Um, now, in order to make that happen, in order to make that work, you need to make it purposeful. So you have to know that you're only going two measures at a time and make sure that you shape that phrase accordingly. Um, so there's dynamics you can do with that. There's tempo things you can do with that. Uh, I think through that whole section, there are uh, 40 measures that I played for you. And I think I only played two four bar phrases where I wanted to make the make it a little bit longer. So uh, try to look for those. And then and the last I played for you, and I'll play it one more time, I actually went down to one bar phrases. I did one note at a time. So here's, here's that ending. So it doesn't sound like a mistake. It sounds like I did that on purpose. And that's what you need to do when you're trying to get that point across. Otherwise, a listener would think, oh, well, they, they just ran out of gas. They couldn't make the phrase or they really don't understand where it's supposed to go. So again, make it purposeful. Make it on purpose. So here are some tips, some things that every section can do and every grade level can do. And that'll be your assignment. So. Hopefully, I did an okay job of demonstrating a two-bar phrase and how to make it work. Uh, think of, Again, think about dynamics, think about tempo, think about how you want to shape that, those notes, uh, and then keep, keep track of counting in your head, things like that. So, uh, the, the kids that have the song Orally, uh, there's a, a section in there, I think it's measure 24-ish, uh, that you have whole notes and then above that the saxophone line has the melody that is a perfect place right there to work on two bar phrases so even though you have whole notes and I ended mine it with dotted half notes and you could see that I could do one bar phrases with those so that was easy to do uh, but again purposeful and it made it sound uh, artistic made, made it sound like it was supposed to be there so orally, that's a good example if you want to use that. High school students, look at The Witch and the Saint. Um, there are uh, sections in there with uh, uh, Helena's theme that you can do two bar phrases. Even if it's not marked, you can look at uh, chances and opportunities where you can do that. Percussion students, look for uh, repeated patterns. Uh, for eighth grade students, look at Swashbuckler's March and look at where you have repetitive sections. For sixth grade, look at first concert march, things like that, where you can look to see where uh, you can make that. Uh, the beginning of our fight song, dot, 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 dot. That's a perfect two bar phrase to work on. Uh, make sure, like as a snare drummer, I could do that all day long. Make sure there's a definite beginning and a definite ending to that two bar phrase. And, uh, and you can see how that works. So that's my challenge for today. Uh, again, three videos this week and three different challenges for you to play on your horn and find them. If you don't, don't limit yourself to the band music. If you have other things you want to play, maybe someone's played a solo in the past and you want to revisit that. The solos that I'm using this week 
I've played since I was in high school or college. So that's been well over 20 years ago that I've played these, but it's all still relevant today and it demonstrates how to be a better player and think about what you're playing and looking at the music. Sometimes, like I mentioned before, sixth graders, your book is full of two bar phrases. So look at where those breath marks are. Um, older folks, eighth grade folks or high school folks, uh, look at your uh, music. Eighth graders, look at your book. Your book is gonna wanna force you to go four bar phrases, but see if you can nitpick that a little bit and see if you can find those golden opportunities to play those two bar phrases. So hopefully something stuck to today in the video that I shared with you and that you can find some of those. So take your uh, first assignment, go find a two bar phrase, uh, record it for me. If you, I ask you to do a video, if you're uncomfortable being on the screen and don't wanna talk to yourself, because I'm talking to myself on the phone right now and it's kind of weird. Uh, and if you don't want to do that or don't like to do that, just record yourself. Um, if you're uh, someone who doesn't have an instrument at home or might just have a mouthpiece at home, uh, if you, you can record yourself singing a two bar phrase. And if that's not comfortable for you, find a recording, find a video, YouTube video or whatever of somebody doing a solo that demonstrates a two bar phrase or even cheat a little bit uh, and maybe use the example I used and find a good recording of Cavatine. So hopefully through this I'll be able to give you some pointers and some insights and just some things that I don't usually get time to teach you and a lot of times you kids don't get to see me play uh, as a soloist. So that's different too, and I'll be digging out some old music that I've had. So, two bar phrases today. I hope something stuck, and I will see you tomorrow.